This goes out to all my trainers out there. I don't know if you're like me, but have you ever had someone tell you that they could do what you did or what you do? Have you ever had someone say, oh yeah, I mean, I trained that class. It really shouldn't be that, that difficult or it's not that serious or it shouldn't take all that. And I've had serious conversations with individuals in the past that you may have made a wonderful PowerPoint. I mean, bells and whistles, animations, just top notch. And your handouts might've been killer, but that does not make you a trainer. There's a lot that goes into what I do before you see the delivery. My name is Jennifer Mitchell Early. I help individuals and teams achieve organizational success and this is Leadership Matters. I can remember the very first moment that I knew that I wanted to be a trainer. I was on the campus of Ohio University and I was finishing up my um, bachelor's of science in organizational communications. And I had dabbled in a couple business classes like marketing and knew that wasn't it. And then stumbled upon a great class on training and development. This professor was wonderful and I was instantly wooed by the notion of being a training and development professional. Fast forward to my first job where I was a bank management trainee and my one of my rotations was in training and development. Ultimately, I left banking to go back to school to pursue my master's in education uh, my master of education in adult learning and development so that I could pursue training full time. I'm certified instructional developer and designer from Langevin and a certified facilitator from DDI. So I've put in a lot of hours just in education alone. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I state that in, in a lot of my videos. Um, and so I have to say that it kind of galls me when I hear people say, oh yeah, like offhandedly, like, yeah, I can do that. Or yeah, I do that as if there is not specialized education for what I do. Like, you, like people say, oh, it can't be that difficult. I could teach these students, but they're not saying that now after the pandemic. Teachers are getting mad respect for what they do because it's not that easy. It's kind of crazy in that, in, in that people um, are so cavalier about it. And it's not, it's not personal, right? I know that they are not trying to um, affront me personally. I think that so many times as a way to keep costs in line or scale back, there are so many organizations who do not have formalized training departments and or do not use formalized training departments. Do, you know, the one-off sit next to me, shadow me, let me show you that type of training that it takes away from what professionals bring to the table. It's no different than having, um, than using a carpenter versus a handyman who can, you know, it's good with wood. There are, there are big differences, right? One, you can get cheaper who can, you know, kind of piecemeal and get it together. No offense to my handyman out there. And another one who this is, has been trained in this trade to, to do this type of work. So you might be asking, well, well, what is it that you do? What is it that training or trainers do? And you know, that way I won't make the mistake going forward. So, I am a learning and development consultant and as such, I consult with the client to see what their issue is. I do a needs analysis from the very beginning to ascertain whether or not it is in fact a training issue. Every issue that a manager or supervisor has with their team may not be because they lack education. There may be something else going on there that, you know, whether it's you're not incentivizing them or they're not motivated or they don't have the tools to do the job, whatever those things are, 
then that is diagnosed at that level. So first things first is you do a needs analysis. There's a whole design cycle that a um, instructional designer goes through. And there are some organizations that segment these roles off. So some organizations solely have consultants who go in, consult with the client, hear what's going on, make a diagnosis, offer up a holistic solution if the client is, um, you know, okay with that or can, you know, just target it to one area, which, I don't prefer to work that way because I want to give a solution that's going to solve the whole problem as opposed to nuance it off and just do one thing and you still have an issue because maybe it just wasn't that one thing. However, I digress. So there are people who will, um, there are roles that are just consultants. Then there are roles that are just solely instructional designers, which means I'm going to design the course from start to finish. I'm going to design all the courseware, whether it be uh, to include a participant guide, a facilitator's guide, any handouts, any job aids, any toolkits that go along with it, any um, SOPs or standard operating procedures, if that goes along with it, any PowerPoints, any videos, any integrated learning, uh, any distance learning, that's what the instructional designer will do. They will design all those components. And then there is the facilitator who, um, you know, some organizations just have facilitators. They just grab those materials, they go out and their job is to teach, train the course, facilitate the learning process. That is a facilitator. Um, when I was coming up in the industry, we, you were all one in the same. You did everything. You consulted with the client, you developed the materials, you facilitated. Even now, when I work with um, my clients, I do it all. I can bring it all to the table as I have certifications in all those areas. And I, that's what I'm accustomed to doing anyway. But it takes a lot to put together a program. And I'm gonna go further than that, to put together a curriculum, which may include more than one workshop or one session, a curriculum may be sessions that build upon one another. It may be a series um, versus presenting information where, you know, you present reports, you present um, information, but that doesn't mean that you ensure, the difference is you don't ensure the transfer of training. And what I do, people come to me because I bridge the gap between today, where your people are today and where you need them to be tomorrow. So um, A is today, C is tomorrow, B is the bridge, that's me. So I, you know, I interact with them, I interact with you and I, I determine what the solution is, what behaviors need to change, what they need to be doing going forward. and. That doesn't always translate um, based off of a conversation with my client alone. A lot of times I have to analyze the learners, which means I have to spend time out in the trenches to understand what they do, how they feel about what they do, whether or not they have all the tools to do what they do, and you know what the missing pieces of the puzzle are so that I can put those pieces in place so that we can get to see and be prepared for the tomorrow. So that is the difference between presenting information and you know talking at someone, then engaging someone in the process and getting their feedback and allowing them to navigate the journey with some assistance from me along the way, fleshing out criteria and expectations and tools and needs and all of those things. So as an instructional designer, we talked about, I talked to clients and I determined the needs. And then from there, you plan the project, you analyze your learners, you list the tasks. So when I spend time out in the trenches to see what they're doing, I'm associating what tasks they do to do their jobs, right? And then I analyze those tasks and I figure out there's something missing from where we need to go when we talked about bridging to tomorrow. I write objectives for the course. I design any tests and assessments, any knowledge checks to make sure that they're actually learning along the way or that when our time is spent together, they have um, completed, we've actually met the, those objectives, they understand them and they can actually perform the objectives. That's the difference between a performance objective and an educational objective. I select methods on how I'm going to teach the course. Um, I talked about one thirds, two thirds application. So one thirds is content. 
our presentation, two thirds application, them actually doing what we're talking about in the training. Um, I structure the course, develop materials, send them over to my client to get their feedback and to get their approvals and validate the course. And then I have a course evaluation for the learners at the end to determine whether or not the course has met their needs. Now those, generally speaking, you probably are familiar with what is referred to in the industry as smile sheets, which talks about, you know, the environment, the facilitator, the materials and all that. But there are actually four levels of evaluation, which goes up to the return on investment to see if it's worth the client investing in the education and the training for um, their employees. And that is the whole design cycle kind of in a nutshell. And that's what separates a, um, I'm gonna use them all together, a learning, well, I'm gonna use learning and development consultant, i.e. trainer versus a presenter.